Alright, so in our second example of these scalar line integrals, what we want to do is we want to integrate this function along the piecewise linear path from the point 0, 0, 001 to the point 0, 020 0, to the point 111. I went ahead and took the liberties of parametizing these paths. From 0, 0, 001 to 0, 0, 002, the from 0, 0, 001 to 0, 0, 002, the path is going to be 0 in the x component, no change, 2 in the y component, and we're going to subtract 1 from the x component as t goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so now I want to continue on my path, and on the next one, I want to go from 0 to 0 to 1, 1, 1 here in the time 1 to 2. Okay, so we see that we are going to decrease 1 in the x. We are going to decrease 1 in the y. But since our starting point is 1, if we plug 1 in here, we'll have 2 my starting position. If we plug 2 in here, we'll have 1, my ending position. And then we have this one here that takes us from 0 to 1 from the time it takes to go from 1 to 2. So if you put 1 in here, you have 0. If you put 2 in here, you have 1. Alright, so I've also drawn these guys. I drew these guys over here. Here we're going from this point to that point, back over to this point. Alright, we're trying to integrate along the curve f, x, y, z, ds. So we see we have a piecewise path, so we want to take this integral in two pieces because these line integrals are additive along smooth paths. I can take this, c1, f of C1 T and multiply it by its ds, the magnitude of C prime of T1 dt, and I can add that to the integral along the second path, the function evaluated at the second path times the magnitude of the tangent of the second path ds. Alright, far out. So I need only find those pieces now. So I go through and I do that. I need to find f of c1. In doing so, everywhere I see an x in c1, I put a zero. 0 times e to the, so for completeness, z is 1 minus t squared. We see that is going to be equal to 0. So this entire integral is going to go to 0. Great. That's only going to leave us our second piece. Let's take a look at our second piece. For our second piece, we need to find f of c2 of t. Uh-huh. That says everywhere I see x, I'm going to put a t minus 1. e to the z in this instance is t minus 1 squared. Okay. We also need to find the magnitude of the derivative of c2 of t. Well, that's okay. That's going to be the derivative of that, it's going to be the square root of, the derivative of my x component is 1, so then 1 squared, plus the derivative of my y component is minus 1, which is going to be minus 1 squared. And the derivative of my third component is 1, 
So this is going to be plus one squared. And we see that the magnitude of the tangent of the second path is the square root of three, t he. So because this integral evaluates to zero, because that function was zero, we need only now look at the second path. Now, the time it takes on the second path, it goes from t is equal to one to two. And then f of c2 was t minus one e to the, can I take the liberty of multiplying that out? t squared minus two t plus one. Then I need to multiply that by the magnitude of the derivative of the second path. So this is going to be the square root of three t he dt. All right, I'm almost done. Let me um, pass that root three out front. There's your square root of three there. This is the integral from one to two, t minus one e to the t squared minus two t plus one dt. All right, that's awesome. Here you're gonna see that you're gonna have a u sub, right? You're gonna let u be this guy, then the derivative is two t minus two, factor out that two and put it out front and um, integrate it. I think you got it from here. You finish. Ah, a box. And a pretty scratchy pink flower. <laughs>